we've pretty much covered the main topics that we need to cover. Um, we will do a few more word problems in our face-to-face -face meeting next week, and then we will start our massive review the following week. But I want to come back and cover up a couple of topics that um, people really struggle in. Getting you ready for Algebra 2, a couple of areas I need to make sure that you're pretty um, proficient in. One of them is using fractions. Now, I know you have your calculators that you can use, but I also know that several in this group are going to want to look at taking college entrance exams and SATs and those tests that don't allow you to use a calculator or that will only allow you to use the, the simple calculator. So this whole lesson is going to be about using fractions. However, the homework is going to be a little bit different in that the questions are going to be in this throughout this presentation, if that's the right word. So it'll say problem one, problem two, problem three. And then when you click the link for the homework, um, you will have to an fill in the answers there. So when you click the link for the online exam, question one will say question one from lecture. Question two will say question two from lecture. So get a piece of paper out so that you can write these problems down and work them here and then you'll just translate the answers online so I can grade them. So the first concept I want us to look at is go, going all the way back really to the very beginning of our Algebra 1 um, curriculum is order of operations. So remember order of operations, we have parentheses. Well, let me get my pen to work. Parentheses, exponents or roots, then we multiply or divide together from left to right, and then we add or subtract together from left to right. So let's do a little bit of a review. We're going to work through one of these together. Then I'm going to give you the problem for number one on the homework. So you have a problem like this, one half, parenthesis, yada, yada, you can read. And if we're going to do this by hand, we have to remember a couple of things. Now, obviously, on your homework, I'm not going to be there to know if you're doing them by hand or not, but I would highly suggest that those of you who are wanting to look at college um, attempt to do them by hand and then check yourselves on your calculators. So step one, I have to start inside of my parentheses right here. I am actually going to also simplify these roots on this first step. Remember to add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. Three and five can both become 15. So I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by three and this whole fraction by five, common denominators. When I do all of that, I end up with 12 over 15, 10 over 15, and then that 16 over 25. Remember, when you have a fraction under a radical, you just square root the top and you square root the bottom. This symbol, because I can already hear you guys in my head, this symbol right here is called a radical symbol. Okay, I'm still not done inside of my parentheses, so now I'm just going to add that, 12 plus 10, and the bottom stays. All right, I've done my parentheses, I've done my exponents, and now I multiply and divide together from left to right, and that gives me 22 over 30, top times top, bottom times bottom. Remember, you do not need a common denominator when multiplying or dividing. Minus uh, 4 over 5, I have to have a common denominator. Um, 30 and 5, they can both become 30. 30 times 1, right? Or 5 times 6. And that gives me negative 2 over 30. Now you have to remember, you must reduce. You can have an improper fraction, so I can have like negative 11 over 10. That's improper. The top can be bigger than the bottom. But it must be reduced. So what can 2 and 30 both be divided by? And the answer is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 15 divided by 2 is 30, so my final answer is one, negative, sorry, 1 over 15. So here is homework question number 1. So write this problem down. You can pause the video and go ahead and work it now, or just write it down and um, solve it later. The thing is, I cannot enter fractions on that program, so that's why you're going to pull them from the homework here. Pause the video, get this problem written down, and then you can either work it now or work it later, but get this written down. This is homework question one, so when you click on that link, 
for the quiz, number one will literally say homework question number one from lecture. Okay, so write this down so you can solve it. All right, now let's walk through a solving for x um, problem with fractions. And these are long. So step one, we have to simplify anything following our order of operations. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute my 3 out. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1. Now, I'm going to move my x to this side and my non-x's to this side. So I have positive 2 thirds x minus 4 over 5x equals 3 minus 12 plus 1. Okay, so I move my x's to my left, whole numbers to the right. The process doesn't change. You just have to be kind of careful with the fractions, okay? Next step, add any like terms. <coughs> now, in order to add 2 thirds, well, in this case, subtract 2 thirds and 4 fifths, I have to find a common denominator, um, which would be 15. But because of uh, space here, no, that's not true. I'm not because I did actually worked it. So this is going to be multiplied by 5. This is going to be multiplied by 3. So that gives me 10 over 15, 12 over 15. Then all of this combined is negative 8. Now we're going to add these like terms, or subtract in this case. It's 10 minus 12. That gives me negative 2 over 15. Then I need to move that negative 2 over 15 over. When I move it over, I'm going to divide. When I divide a fraction, I flip and multiply. So I'm going to just go ahead and skip to that end point and just flip and multiply. I have to put my 8 over 1 because it's a whole number. And I flipped this because I am technically dividing. And the way you divide is flip the second and multiply. So then 8, over 15, eight times 15, 1 times negative 2 gives me negative 120 over negative 2. Reduce down, x is 60. So <clears throat> these get a little bit tedious with those fractions. Even using your calculator, this gets tedious. <sighs> Sorry I had to yawn. So just take your time and work through it. Your homework question number two, 3 and 1 third plus 2x minus 4 fifths equals x minus 1. So write this down so that you can go back and do it for your homework question on the easy test maker thing. All right, let's look at solving expressions. Another time, another um, wording here for is evaluate. So our goal is to solve this if this. So all I have to do is plug those values in for x and y. I always put mine in parentheses so I don't lose my operation or my signs. So 3x becomes 3 times 2 thirds. 1 ninth times y becomes 1 ninth times 4 over 5. And then x by itself is just 2 thirds. And now I just work through order of operations. There's no parentheses. Well, there's no work to be done inside of parentheses. There's no exponents. So I multiply. Put this 3 over 1. Remember, or remember, you do not have to have a common denominator when you multiply, but you do when you add. So 3, 45, and 3, what can they all become? Well, 45 can become 3 by multiplying it by 15. So when I multiply both of those fractions, numerator and denominator, by 15, I get this. Now I have a common denominator, so I just add my tops. 90 plus 4 plus 30 gives me 124 over 45. If you can reduce, you need to reduce, but I don't believe, let me check on my calculator, I cannot reduce this one, so that's my answer. So when you have one of these problems, it will either say evaluate or solve. You just plug your values in 
X and Y or whatever letters you're given. <clears throat> Here's your homework question number three. One fifth X plus two Y plus 11 over nine. If X equals that and Y equals that, remember two things side by side means multiply. So don't forget you're multiplying between those two things, okay? So write this problem down so you can enter it for your homework question number three. And let's do the last one, which is the hardest one. Um, we're going to solve systems of equations using fractions. So remember, when we have a problem like this, we substitute, we take this value, plug it in for y here, okay? y equals 1 third x minus 4. So I'm going to substitute that value in right here for y. And this is really small on here because there's so many steps that I had to shrink the font. So 1 half x plus 1 third times y equals 7. Start with distributive property. 1 half x plus 1 ninth x minus 4 thirds equals 7. Then we need to add our like terms, but because they're fractions, I have to have a common denominator. 2 and 9 can both become 18, so this is times 9. This is times 2, which gives me 9 over 18 plus 2 over 18. Then we just add those. 9 plus 2 is 11, so 11 over 18x minus 4 over 3 equals 7. Move that negative 4 thirds over. When I move it over, it becomes a plus. And again, I can't add these because they don't have common denominators, which in this case would be 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 3, which gives me 21 thirds plus 4 thirds. Now I can add them. 11 over 18x equals 25 over 3. Now I need to move that 11 over 18 over, but because I'm out of space, I went ahead and skipped to the end again. Because remember, if I move it over, I'm technically tech, uh, technically going to divide. But because they're fractions, to divide, I flip and multiply. So I've already just moved that over and flipped it. Now I just multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, and reduce. So when I reduce, I get 150 over 11. Now, after all of that tediousness, we're still not done because that only tells me what x equals. Now I need to solve for y. So what I'm going to do is take this value and plug it in here for x and solve for y. So y equals <coughs> 1 third times 150 over 11 because that's the value we got when we solved for x minus 4. Because I'm multiplying this first part right here because of order of operations I multiply, I don't have to have a common denominator for multiplication. So I get, oh, 150 over 33. <clears throat> now in order to add these, I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to put 4 over 1. I'm going to multiply this by 33. Which gives me 150 minus 132 over 33. To subtract 150 minus 132 gives me 18 over 11 <clears throat> and I'm sorry 18 over 33 it reduces to sorry I was a step ahead in my brain 6 over 11 now the one you have for homework doesn't have anywhere near as big of these fractions I don't think hopefully it'll be a little bit simpler but the rules of these don't change. You're still going to work them just the same as if they're whole numbers. It's just a lot because of those fractions. Okay, so your homework, or yeah, your homework question, question number four is this. And this is all I'm going to make you do for this lesson because it's a review, just practicing with fractions. So write this down and then go on to the Easy Test Maker link. Enter. Whew. Oh, sorry, I had to yawn. Enter the answers for those questions, and um, that's it for this lesson.